So I uh, end up getting a slot for 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 Buds pretty much right away. Uh, just all kind of synced up, lined up. All the timing. Yeah, right? it was like synchronicity. It was like, yeah. you know, so now November, so I think September was my, September, August was my conversation with my friend, convinced me to go. Now November, I'm, I'm sitting in, in Buds, right? That's fast. It's fast. <laughs> it's like, and, and I was, uh, I, I, I was in decent shape, but I wasn't 18. Right. You know, my recovery wasn't that good. So I. Do you think it was almost better because you didn't have time to like hype yourself up and fear and like. Yeah, I think so. I just went in your head. You're just like, oh, well, I'm here now. I'm here. I'm here. Let's do it. Yeah. And and so I, since I've already been, I was in the Navy eight years, I was an E6. So I barely made the cutoff for the age and I was the most senior person you can be. And. Which for people that don't know in a selection, that's bad. It's not good. It's not good. It's <laughs> yeah, like when you're, when you're when, on. when you're an E6, there's only one E6, and 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 now I'm potentially taking a, a spot in the teams as an E6, where you know guys are fighting to be in that le- these leadership positions, and and so yeah, so I I was the class LPO leading petty officer, so now I'm hurting 250 cats right and. Every time someone gets in trouble, now I'm in the surf zone with them. I mean, I got my ass handed to me. I was always wet, always sandy. I, I just remember the inside of my thighs bleeding constantly. I mean, you know, lost all my toenails, everything, right? And, and that was even before we started selection, right? So our selection for buds is you have what they used to call indoc. Now it's orientation. And indoc was just an extension of starting first phase so you you know they're weeding out people it's all about like you know for you guys it's selection they get you guys get selected for us it's almost like a deselection program you deselect yourself from our program you can quit anytime there's the bell and and there isn't really like there isn't opportunity for there is and there isn't if a guy's struggling later on right and he can't get the skills done then then he basically gets selected out, right? Because mm-hmm. he's not passing the, the wickets. But you, we all know how that goes too. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, we weeded the class from, we started with 250, 260. I think we started first phase with maybe 175, right? You know, going that into- That many went out in pre. Yeah, because you know, like I said, they're they're weeding out. Maybe it was, you know, 175, 200. I mean, my numbers could be skewed, but- The Rangers did something similar too, so like, because- I went with uh, a later class. It was RASP, yeah. it's a Ranger Assessment Selection Program, because it used to be RIP. It was only it was three weeks, and then RASP they made it two months. So then you had a month of kind of train up. Yeah. But there was what people don't know about is the pre RASP. Yeah. And that's when the Rangers take you from airborne school and yeah. you belong to them now. Yeah. And that's when life gets hard. It's that's not right. RASP isn't when life gets hard. It's yeah. pre RASP. Yeah. Once they say you're you belong to me. That's when life gets hard, yeah. and that's yeah, it's that that gets in their head because it's like we haven't even started, right? And if it's this bad now, yeah, w- w- what's first phase gonna be like? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like I can't believe I can barely walk now, and that's what we do. We get in our heads, right? I'm I'm looking towards like like hell weeks, five weeks from now, and I can I can't walk now. Like, how am I supposed to be awake for five days? So you know, it seems daunting, right? Yeah. Impossible, but uh, yeah, so so. We uh, started first phase. Um, I the our obstacle course, you know, being that I'm a little bit vertically challenged. I was five eight. Now I'm probably five seven because I'm fifty three. <laughs> I'm getting shorter by the year. That's okay. Uh, but there's this obstacle called the dirty name, and you know, you kind of jump up on this thing and you kind of hurdle your you know yourself on and and. Uh, uh, I, I f- end up fracturing three ribs. Uh, and I mean, if, if, if you've ever fractured or br- even bruised ribs, it is excruciating. There's excruciating pain. Like, and I was popping Motrin like it was candy. I was chewing it up, you know, just to get into my system faster. Uh, just to, you know, stay in that mix, right? And You're like the rock and ballers. What's that? The rock in the show Ballers. He's just constantly chewing on. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I was, I was like, <laughs> like my my my, my like, ass my my stomach was all jacked up. You know, it's like, and I, I'm 
I'm just, I'm thrashed. I'm, I'm beat up. And this is not even, you know, now we're, we're getting into the beginning of first phase, but I just like, I just kept on like, it's okay. It's okay. Like you can, you can push your body further than I, there was just this inside voice that you can do way more than you think you can. You can do, your mind is incredible if you said it to something. And I, I set it to, to go into the top. Like I wasn't, there was nothing, you were going to have to kill me right before I reached that top. And, you know, again, being the LPO, everyone, like there, there isn't a lot of people that don't quit when they're in that position, right? You, those are the guys that, that, that weed out first. But I, I just, I think it actually helped me instead of hindered me because now my mind wasn't on myself. Mm. It was on those around me. And, and that, and, and I think there's some power in that, right? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm worried about getting our whole group to lunch, right? I'm in myself and the officer in charge are the last ones to get in. I, I sit down, I shovel some food in my, in my mouth and look around. All right, everyone's fed, everyone's good. All right, guys, we're out, we're going, we're moving to the next. And it, it, there, wasn't, there wasn't any time to sit down and think or feel sorry for myself, right? Yeah. Um, I've seen that backfire in, in the Q course we had uh, the leader it was freezing that day and we we're about to step off. And it, I mean, it was so bitter cold. Like yeah. I was, we're all scared. And I think the pressure of being in that leadership role, he came out and he's like, Hey guys, I forgot something. I'll be right back. Yeah. And we're like, okay. Yeah. And then 10 he, minutes later, he like never showed back 15 up. minutes later, it's like, he's, he never came back. <laughs> I never, I'm out. I never saw that guy again in my life. Just, yeah. He yeah. was just like, Never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, that pressure it either pushes you forward or pulls you back. Yeah, right? it becomes overwhelming to have all these eyes staring at you, or it yeah. empowers you and yeah. you just hyper focus on helping them. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, and that, and for me, it was it was that it, I use that as leverage and energy just to keep on going forward. And, and uh, so now I'm, you know, fractured fractured ribs. I didn't know they were fractured. I just knew it hurt. Right. I'm like, oh man, this really hurts. But the thing with buds. In any type type of course, like Q courses, if you go to medical, you're gonna get rolled. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of guys, right, that don't DOR or drop on request, that will go to medical, right, because they're hurting or whatever, and get rolled, right, and then it's like, oh, man, this is really tough. You know, and everyone's different, right? I think there's a difference between being hurt and having pain. I mean. I was hurt and I had pain, right? But, but, and I probably shouldn't have done what I did because the, like, you know, I could have, I could have really di hurt myself even worse. But I, I look at it, you know, like if I'm on the battlefield, right, and I get hurt, guess what? I'm going to push through. And it isn't until I'm on the other side of it that I can finally say, hey, I got to take a knee. Like something happened. Like, shit, like, you, you didn't tell us like, no, there's no room for that when you're out on the battlefield. And I, and for me, that's what buds was. It was a battlefield and I was trying to survive. And I think, you know, we're going to probably get into it, but everything that I dealt with in childhood, right. Made me like survive that. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't even got into what, you know, the hell week part of it, but like, I wouldn't have been able to do what I did without that adversity. Right, and the things that I saw and Absolutely. dealt with. And uh, so now I'm, we start, you know, we get ready to start Hell Week and we're doing med checks and everything and pneumonia is going around. I was a winter Hell Week. Um, so I, we started class probably, oh, it was like January. Um, so it was cold. It was a really cold winter. We had an El Nino year, which we're going to have again, I think this year here, but in big surf. The historical, like the whole compound flooded, you know, everyone has their like story of like, Oh, it was a winter hell week, the worst storm, the worst weather. But I mean, we had, we had some really bad weather that year. The sur I just remember seeing this, the surf when we were doing our, our IBS or boats, you know, going out, you know, as a team, you, you pair up, you know, you do everything in boats and, and we're, we're going through the surf and it was just like, monster waves Can and you... you're fighting that like there's yeah. no breaks or like oh we'll continue this later no like, like the surf's big like the instructor's like game on like <laughs> it's like the, the, there's nothing stops right yeah. and uh so now i'm at my med check pneumonia is going around and 
I I was like I remember like coughing and I spit up this neon green sputum. You know, and I'm like, holy crap. Infection. I got an infection. But I was like, you know what? This isn't going to stop me. So I didn't report it to medical. Um, I went and got myself some meds outside of, of the Navy. And I ended up taping it to the bottom of the, uh, um, the child line. No like way. Thing, right? So I was able to have my meds. And, uh, so, so, so I, I don't know, again, I think the mind over matter, right? You know, if you set your mind to something like I, there's, I just think back, there's no way I should have been able to, even on meds, be able to fight that. Cause hell week is five days of pretty much continuous on the go. And they give you two or three hours of sleep in the mix there. But the first time I'm, I'm, freezing right i'm jackhammering and and i'm not i'm not sleeping uh and then the second time I, or actually the first time they put us in a hot tent which i think is a part of the whole plan because i i did fall asleep for that hour mm-hmm. and i remember waking up and i could i couldn't move right and there was like at least 10 people at that moment they were like i'm done <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to get back out and do this. When was the yeah. was the hot tent just part of your warm up? What is it? No, what was, was the hot uh, so they give you sleeping so they have a, a tent like set up and the tent, you know, with the heat and the sun, right? It was just nice and warm. Yeah. But you know, you you they they make you all comfortable, you get these nice dry camis on. So it's not a choice. Everyone is going to get No, you have you have to go sleep. <laughs> You're gonna go sleep, and this is you're gonna uh, go see what good feels yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, right. You're like so. we're gonna get, we're gonna make you nice and warm. That's sadistic. <laughs> we're gonna put the <laughs> we're gonna put the nice music on, you know, and 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 yeah, I felt I I was out right, and and like I, I tell you, like after that, I mean, I could I could barely move. I was so stiff because it was three, like su- start Sunday night. You have Monday, you have Tuesday, so it was like Tuesday. I think when we first got any sleep and uh, yeah, 10 guys were like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting back out there. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's part of it. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. You know, make like them comfortable. How many of you would have chosen to avoid that tent? Had you given the option? It, it would have been easier. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. And, uh, so I, um, I ended up pushing through. I, I, I remember Thursday of hell week, we were down, you know, we think we started Hell Week with maybe 100 guys, and we were down to 26 at Thursday. Uh, so that was so kind you, of you went from pre pre buds at 200 and something, 250. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 250 plus. Down to 25. 20, 25, 26 guys total. Wow. And I remember, you know, we were at it. We call it Chow in the Navy. We were at lunch, and. I just remember, I don't know wh- wh- what got over me or what I said. I don't even remember what I said, but I just gave this speech to the guys like, you know, the, like, hey, we are the guys that are going to finish this. Like, whatever. Like, like, just firing them up. Nice. And, and I just remember the change, right? The instructors who were so against me, right? Just like, like, we need to get rid of this guy, right? Type thing. He's an E6, this, that. Like, the shift was like, oh, he's the real deal. Right. He's one of us now. Like, nice. I, I, I felt that shift. And for us, when you make it through Hell Week, you, because you, you wear your, your regular, you know, we didn't have camis back then. We had these green BDUs. Um, and we wore, you wore a white t shirt. So you stood out. Like, you knew he's a pre Hell Week guy with the, with the white t shirt. And if you made it through Hell Week, you got the brown t shirt. And I still have my original brown t shirt, like, with my name stenciled on it. My dad has it. 